Alright, my name is Curtis Spivey here with ABU Games and we're going to go over a new deck tech for brand new standard with green white tokens. Let's talk about what's in it and why we think green white tokens is going to be one of the new decks in the meta. Let's start with the powerhouse of the deck and kind of why I think Convoke is going to be able to be used because this has a strong Convoke mechanic for this deck. It's a Maria Soul of the Accord. She is a 2-2 and whenever she becomes tapped, so attacking, or if you Convoke with her, you're going to get a 1-1 white soldier creature token with lifelink. This helps you go wide. I'm running four of her. The reason why we're running four even though she's legendary, is because of that powerful ability. And if she doesn't get killed, she will get things out of control with how this deck's looking to win. The next thing we're going to look at is a two of is Shauna Sisei's Legacy. She's a zero zero, but she gets plus one plus one for each creature you control. She's green and white, and she can't be the target of abilities your opponent controls. So spells she can still be the target of. But for those abilities, it actually kind of helps you a little bit. One thing kind of looking at when I was thinking of some resilience, your opponent just can't slam that turn five and go, okay, I'm going to be able to land a Teferi and you're not going to be able to do anything. Teferi can't tuck this, so you're going to be good to go with still attacking. And if you even have a couple of attackers out there or play more, you can probably kill that Teferi. So it's super helpful even if they plus it. One of the other kind of mainstays that didn't get its time to shine in the last standard was Benelish Marshall. This is a 3-3 for 3 white, which does have a strong white mana requirement. But it being a 3-3 is great, and other creatures you control get plus one, plus one. This is one of the two really strong ways that we have on creature bodies that can help with the Convoke mechanic, but also keep your creature from just those one pinging goblin chain whirlers or whirly boy taking care of it. From there, we actually have some spells that we're going to go over. In the spells, we have Pride of Conquerors. This may have been a limited all-star for Ixalan, and it's got a send on it. It's an instant, and it has creatures you control get plus one, plus one, a tone to turn. If you have the city's blessing, so 10 or more permanents out, everything gets plus two, plus two. So not only can it actually save you from the Goblin Chain Ruler, it can actually push through just those last points of damage, and with as wide as this deck can go, it's a real big helpful piece. From there, we've got Sapperlene Migration. This is a Dominaria limited all-star with a kicker four, but for one green and one colorless, you can put in two one one green Sapperlene creature tokens. This is kind of going with the whole token theme. And if you do get a kick it, you actually get to put in four instead. That just makes your board go so wide with all these pump anthem effects. From here, we've got four Legions Landing. This card, again, got pushed out of the last meta, but it's just so good at helping you ramp for mana, but also being able to let you create more tokens if your board does get wiped. And on that turn three, if you can flip this, it really does help keep that token production going on. Such a great land. If you don't have yours, it's still kind of under-costed. Card dropped a lot. Uh, it's really good pickup right now for the new standard. From there, kind of like following right in with the, the Knights themes, we've got History of Benalia. Probably, if not the best token maker, it's right up there. The Vigilance the Knights gives you where you can attack, and then the great thing after you attack is you can still tap and Convoke, because we've got a big card coming up we're going to talk about that's really important for that Convoke. But uh, it creates a 2-2 Knight, and that's on the first and second Saga. After you draw your card, you'll put in that Knight. The third one even is another pump effect you're looking for this deck and give us plus two, plus one. We don't have a lot of knights in the deck, but you do have the Benelish Marshal, which is also a knight. It's just going to kind of help push through uh, more damage if he's on the table. So another great turn three play into four. Now we've got a couple namesake cards that are coming out. We've got March of the Multitudes. This is the Convoke, one green, two white, and X spell that lets you put X11 white soldier creature tokens with lifelink into play. Just being able to just put tons of tokens in, make sure you get that city's blessing with the Pride of Conquerors. You can seriously win out of nowhere when it looks like your board was wiped, your control opponents look like they've got things under control. You'll just be able to go ahead and put out so much more. You'll be able to push through damage you didn't have just out of nowhere. And if you do have tokens, it can be win more, but just that lifelink can really be blowouts. With the Pride of the Conquerors, this is just hand in hand to get you to those 10 to get the city's blessing. 
The next one is Conclave Tribunal. This is the Convoke spell that's going to let you exile a target nomland permanent. This is really your only removal. We're trying to brute force our opponent through and push through damage with 1-1s. This is a way to remove any kind of troublesome permanent with as many token producers as we have. We really have the ability to make sure that we're clearing the board to be able to push that damage or just if something's going to stop our token production. This is a good way to just get rid of it. It's a catch-all. It works with Convoke. You couldn't ask for more for this style of deck. Now, something we haven't heard enough of right now is Venerate Loxodon, or Venerated Loxodon. This is the Convoke 4-4, and when he enters the battlefield, if you use creatures to Convoke with it and tap them, you put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature that it Convoked. This is the new Verderous Gear Hulk that I think isn't being talked about enough. I ordered my playset today on this one along with the rest of this deck. Just from the amount of times I'll get to play with it. Seems like you can't lose when you get to play this in a turn of the March of Multitudes. And you put plus one plus one counters with having a Benelish Marshal. You have like eight three threes coming at them. It doesn't matter what they have on board. Even push through Lyris for damage if they have it. So this card can do a lot of work for you. It really is another big anthem effect and a creature spell. Being able to cast it with Convoke, I mean, just on turn three, maybe just push them through that extra damage. Just maybe control opponents won't have time to like uh, get everything underneath control. So it's a really good new card that will be coming out in a couple weeks. From there, we've got our land base. We're we'll only running two forest and 12 planes. 12 planes because we really need to cast that Venomous Marshal. The triple white is very difficult. You need to make sure you have it. From there, we've got our dual lands. We've got two Celestian Guild Gates, four Sun Petal Groves. Those are the check lands, planes, or a forest to make sure it comes into play untapped. And then the new Shock Land, which is going to help with these green white base decks, Temple Garden. From there, we'll go ahead and move over to the sideboard. That's really the main, uh, built for how we're gonna see the new metas are. We don't know any new decks, so getting them out here to see and test against is gonna be important. So give you something to look at from Team ABU here. In the sideboard, a new card that we have that I think you're gonna see pop up in every sideboard that can run green-white is Night of Autumn. Getting to have the options for your mana is one of the greatest things you can do in standard, being able to put two counters if you just need a 4-3 body, destroy a target artifact or enchantment, or gaining for life in those red wizard burn decks that look like they're gonna be a thing is such an important factor to have. This has been talked about. It could possibly be in the main deck as well, but again, that 2-1 body, we're trying to keep that out unless it is something that we need to have because we will be able to flood the board and threes really want to get that Benelish Marshal out to push through damage. From there, we've got some more removal with three Ixalons binding. This will be good for troublesome permanents that your opponent casts and think they've stabilized. You see some big five mana spell. This will keep that out of the game and then they can't cast anymore. This is going to be just from the rivals, the Ixalon block as well. Three of that. So you're kind of turning into a control deck at that point with this. <clears throat> following cards will be a, to settle the wreckage so if you do become more controlling you can keep clearing their board they can try to push through you can just take out their bigger things if you're worried about it or can't block from there i've got two shalai voice of plenty this card is so good in green white matchups on here it's only four it's a three four and the ability to just make your team bigger if you know that they have a whole bunch of things to kill smaller creatures this is so good to have in or if your opponent is a control deck this is such a great piece to bring in, so they can't settle you while this is out if it doesn't attack. It just gives you that, that insurance that you need and putting that plus one plus one counter gives you a mana sink in that late game that this game that this deck really doesn't have to worry about but if it needs it and now has one after sight. After that, we've got two Lyras for you. We've got Flying First Strike Lifelink. This is just another way to change yours to more of a mid-range deck. If you feel you do need to go slower and they are wiping the board, you can take out your one drops that you have or stuff that dies easily to Goblin Chain Whirler and you can put some bigger things in. Lyra's definitely there for that. With Shalai and that, it's really hard to take her down. Plus it pumps the Angel and gives it Lifelink as well for your Shalai. Last but not least, we've got a catch-all in green. We've got Vivian Reed. She is going to be, I bet, going forward the sideboard card of choice just from the removal of target artifact, enchantment, or creature of flying. It just gives you so much versatility and able to dig for one of those pieces that you need. 
and it's so important with the plus one. So she'll be big in the long run. Also, our emblem is really good with your team if you can get it. Emblems sometimes are a dream, but in this deck, she really does work out. So that's green white tokens before it gets released, and just some ideas to go ahead and play around with. Uh, and this is Curtis from ABU Games.